Hey guys, it's Bando, this is Brexit Bando, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint the colour white. And the colour white is very difficult for some people. Um, I have... I've always been able to paint white kind of well. Um, I've never really had a problem with it. So, yeah, I, I thought I'd go over it. So, there's a lot of white paints out there. And there's a lot of different ways of painting white. Um, and if you see here, these are some of the, not all of, but some of the paints that uh, I have that would be used in painting white. Um, well, we don't need to worry about those. Because I'm going to teach you to paint white using three colours. And it's nice and simple. And I'm going to be using Orphan Grey. This is one of the best paints the Games Workshop have ever created. Vallejo's Transparent Blue, which is incidentally how I paint my Night Lords. And then a white. And depending on what you want to use, uh, you can go for a warmer white or a colder white. Uh, I actually prefer game colours off-white and 90% of the white work I do is with game colour off-white which is why I have a fresh one and one that's been abused and I'm going to be showing you on my Sons of Medusa as I've decided to start some Sons of Medusa models and I have already started so all these guys have had is a coat of a uh, coat of Ulthwin Grey. So, see here, it, this guy's had two coats of Ulthwin Grey, and it's got it nice and smooth. Now, the big thing here, the big takeaway, the big problem, requirement, the the, the bugbear, whatever you want to call it, is it must be a smooth surface. Wherever you are working, the model must be smooth, it must be clean, your water must be clean. Um, because if you've even got any little bits floating around in your paint, any bits of dry paint or any bits of dirt or anything, they're going to show up on the model really, really easily. I apologise if uh, this goes out of focus. This is actually the first time I've ever tried properly recording a painting video, um, as this is. And you want to go slow. Now I've thinned this down. This is actually maybe a little thinner than I'd like. So I'll just grab a bit more. And yeah, you'll want you will want to um, you'll want to get a good couple of coats of this. If you're lucky, um, you could maybe do it in two coats. Three, maybe four is going to be more likely. Oh, that's a bit shaky. Catching the, uh, the camera rig with my microphone. Because I'm so elite, I use a gaming headset and a cheap one at that. So I've got a silly microphone. That's why you can always hear my uh, chair creaking and hear my airbrush compressor go burr in the background and you can probably hear me breathing and all the other horrible low quality audio problems that I don't have money to fix <laughs> but it's okay because we're not here for the audio we're here for my spicy takes and my uh, apparently knockoff arch warhammer accent that was the most insulting thing the most horrible comment I got on my last video was being called a knockoff arch. Uh, not a big arch fan, you know. His videos are okay. Um, I've got no problem with him as a guy, particularly. Um, he's, you know, he's said some things in the past that I don't agree with. Quite a lot of things. And uh, he's got some spicy takes about people based on characteristics that, you know shouldn't be used to judge people but uh, yeah 
just being being told I'm discount arch was uh, I don't know I don't want to say insulting because that's insulting to him but uh, it's not the take I would have ever thought I'd hear oh, so you might just be able to see there's a bit of something in there so I just need to scrape it out and get it out of there and then wash my brush so one of the things you need to work off here is learning when a paint starts to dry because um, when a paint starts to dry it gets thicker and you're more likely to end up putting brush strokes in it, visible brush strokes, you'll start tearing the paint. So when you start noticing that it is dry, just stop. Just stop painting, pop this one down, go grab a different one and uh, work on him. You know, that's why we do batch painting. Um, and you also have to watch out for it on your palette. Now my palette here is the Dr Pepper soda, fizzy drink, whatever you want to call it, lid. I use these for small palettes. I also mount models to them to paint sometimes. Um, as you can see here, because you can just squeeze them and the model will fly off and then you can mount it back to an actual base. I, I do that if I'm going to be painting the base separately. This is an interesting one because this is a Mark II helmet, so it's got a lot of crevices and it's not a lot of smooth spaces. Oh, that's a little thick. But now you can see what I mean about making sure the model's clean. Actually, I don't know if you can see. Um, there is a mold line on top of his head that I've missed. Now I'm not going to bother going back and cleaning that up. I've not, you know, from the tabletop, you're not going to notice it. Um, but if this was a competition piece, that's the sort of thing you need to watch out for. How much gunk is in the corner of these shoulder pads we get for stripping models? <laughs> so, yeah, and I'm also doing the uh, doing the tip giggity of his plasma gun, just to make sure that that's nice and smooth as well. These were from some recovered. What were they? I think they were Astral Claws they were painted as. Uh, I got them from Colours in Newbury last year. I um, thought I'd managed to get myself an absolute bargain. I got 10 Mark III Marines with assorted weapons and then 5 Mark III Marines with... Actually, it might be 10. It was a lot of stuff. It was multi, like multi-melters, genuine forge-world multi-melters. And... Um, plasma cannons and a lot of the Mark III models were just abysmal. They were being put together so badly with plastic glue they'd been melted together and they looked awful. So I saved as many as I could um, and I've reused them but the ones that are too bad are currently being reused on my Prospero scenery um, as dead bodies which is the best thing for them. Now some of these models I've also decided to put the odd uh, knee pad in um, there is not as far as I know any law reason uh, for a white knee pad for a Sons of Medusa it's just their helmets it's not even their shoulder pads even their first company veterans don't seem to um, stray from the standard green and just white so I like to do it just to mix things up so that's also how I paint a lot of my my heresy models, especially my ultramarines. Um, make the story yourself. You know, what? Why is this person wearing, you know, a panel that's slightly different colour? Um, I use black a lot to represent uh, veterans. No, oh, that's no good. I'm gonna have to go over that with a bit of silver or something. As you can see, I've just got a little bit of white on the green, and this green is not achievable really with a brush. This was done all through an airbrush, it's actually quite a subtle blend. So that's going to be a pain, but I intend to weather these guys so that'll just get covered up like the happy little accident it is. If you take a look at these, these are actually Mark VI legs, and I've used a hobby saw to cut a line in them, um, and then just squared off the knee pad. It's not super neat, but it's just a bit more interesting than thousands of Mark VI Marines. And these guys are properly mongreled up. They're made of all sorts of bits. So he's got Mark 3 arms, Mark 7 shoulder pads. He's got 
death guard torsos from the heresy because I like them they look all technical mark 4 legs mark 4 helmet mark 7 pack and a godwin oh no not a godwin bolter a tigerus pan bolter I think tigerus pan maybe I can't remember uh, and then I've used rivets from uh, Zinj Industries on some of them which are the same rivets I've used on my Night Lord's Dreadnought. Um, this guy's also got a load of rivets on his leg. So, once we've let these dry, um, and we've got you know, several coats in, we can get rid of that. And then we're going to move over to the transparent blue. I like transparent blue. It's a good colour. But, when it's used as is, it's very strong. So, just to show you what it's like. Neat. It's an ink. So it's very strong. Which is good. You like that. That's important. Pro tip, if you're, if you're watering down a blue, try using inks instead of water. Um, or if you're watering down any strong colour and you don't want to lose it. So I have mixed it with a little bit of water. Uh, the other thing you can mix in there is things like Lamian Median, but I prefer Vallejo's Glaze Median. Just a drop or two um, will help it flow a bit better. This doesn't actually have any in it, because I couldn't find those earlier, and then I just found them. So it works with just water. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a very little bit on our brush, and we, as you can see, it's not flowing. I'm, I don't want enough to just sort of like I'm not, you know, washing it on like it's Agrax Earthshade or anything. I want a little bit so I can draw with it. And what we're gonna do is we're painting in the shadows. So I'm gonna take this along and it's just all along anywhere where the two white panels meet. Be as neat as possible at this point because then you won't have to go back and tidy up as much. So, that's it. Here, into there. Now, this is because if you ever look at a a white t-shirt or anything. Um, white is not grey and this is this is a mistake that a lot of rookie painters make and they think white is like black in that you know that's the the scale is white to black so you have to go through grey you don't. Now for these guys because they're Sons of Medusa I've gone for a very cold white because white is either warm or cold, basically. And I've gone for that because it contrasts nicely with the green, and also it reflects the fact that they are, in fact, uh, Iron Hand successors, so they are going to be kind of cold and inhuman. If I was doing my white scars, for example, I would not be using a blue, I'd be using a brown. I'd also not be using often grey, I'd probably be using something like an ice yellow or a more creamy white, such as Screaming Skull. And doing that gives you a nice warmer, more deserty themed white. Um, you know, it can give you a nice. Um, Well, warm is the only way to really explain it. Warm white, yeah. Uh, it's good for white scars as well because it kind of gives that uh, ingrained dust kind of feel. You know, they are a little bit dirty. Um, you know, they've been in the saddle a long time, that sort of thing. Okay, I think that's about him done. Don't have to go crazy with this. All we're really doing is putting in a little bit of definition between the panels. Oh, that's way too much. There we go, that's better. 
So I'm going to have to tidy him up a bit, but that's not a problem because that step is going to come next. So, not one here that I did earlier. Here's the magic of television. And now we can just grab our orphan grey again. And we're just going to go over this. Yes, thank you, Mr. Compressor. Your input is definitely respected and required. And we're just tidying it up. Learning to be neat is an important skill with a brush. Um, don't think you have to learn like pixel perfect micron precise brush control um, learning to be messy with a brush can be just as important and just as difficult to learn um, if you want to learn something like a painterly or grimdark style painting style um, as long as the paint is going where you want it to go at the end of the day it doesn't matter how many steps you've had to do to get it there there we go. now if you're being really nice you know you're spending a lot of time doing this you can thin this layer down or this stage down and do it as a glaze almost and that way you'll end up with an additional step so you'll have sort of a dark blue then a mid-tone blue then you're off white sort of thing you don't need it not this scale really it's only really important if you want to try and get like blends it's better for like cloth capes that sort of thing so there you go now is the last bit the last bit is we're going to use um, oh, we'll just use this one. So this is just Vallejo white, nice standard white. Give it a good shake. And find another lid to use. Probably should get myself a wet palette. Actually, I've built a wet palette before. I just generally don't like them. Realise it's probably blocked. I'll leave my paints. Oh. I leave my paints out far too long so they get uh, they get jammed up because I'm an idiot <clears throat> no one has ever accused me of being smart so a really important thing to do with this is make sure you wash your water don't do this after you've painted like your blood angels because what you will do is end up painting pink and you don't want that because it will look silly and trust me it will the amount of paint that will end up in this brush it'll happen you think you you washed it out enough you probably haven't so use a separate brush or use you know fresh water use a what do they call it brush soap make sure you get some brush soap that stuff's fantastic um, or just use bar soap just regular bar soap can work as well and then with this, this is this is the secret about painting white. Uh, everyone will always tell you, don't use white, that's how you paint white. And they're right, you don't. Until you get to the final highlight, which is what we're doing. And all I want to do is a couple of dots. And we're just, just along the edges. Oh, it's a bit thick. Oh, I can't hit, keep hitting this bloody thing with my microphone. Uh, just blend it in a bit. And this is really just the absolute sharpest edges, sort of right at the front of the, the helmet. 
you know, right on the edge of the uh, the Vox grill. Oh. Anywhere where the light's really going to be striking and shining. And that's it. That's painting white with three colours. You can skip this last stage and do it with two, really. Um, once you've got some varnish on that, you will... That will look great from the tabletop. Um, be careful when you do the eyes. But, uh, yeah, you're, you're done. One last thing before we finish. Um, there is one colour that I will advise that you never, ever use. You never, ever bring close to white. And that is non oil. We love non oil around here, don't we? Yes. All painters seem to love it. Non oil is awful on white. It will show up horrendously. Um, black stains white. So, don't use um, non oil for doing your lines because white does not shade into black. If you, you know, even if you were to go into the, the darkest pit on earth and um, fill it with white sheets, for example, and then you would turn a light on, the shadows would not be black. The shadows would reflect whatever the light around you is. So they would reflect the colour of the armour. Actually, the truth be told, I probably should do these Sons of Medusa guys with green, not blue, because the way the light will be bouncing off that white, it will actually be picking up the green as a shadow colour. But the blue contrasts nicely, it's nice and cold, it's very iconic. So that's it. Nice little short video on how I paint white. Um, nice cold white, that is. If you have any questions, please pop them down in the, in the, uh, the comments. Um, I have to say, guys, the last video was just astronomical in the amount of support, the amount of interaction I've had. Um, it actually made making this video kind of hard because, uh, I'll be honest, I was a little afraid. Um, it has It's sitting at about 17,000 views now. Which is insane. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever had... Well, I've never had a video like that. Um, there's more comments, more upvotes, more downvotes than anything I've ever seen on my channel. And for a while it was the most watched video in relation or in response to the subject matter. Um, which is great. You know, I really appreciate that, guys. Um, I do not expect it to continue. I ex fully expect this next video to have, you know, 300 views or so. But those 300 views mean more to me, actually, because I know that you guys are here. You know, you're the repeat customers, the ones that keep coming back, the guys who, you know, keep throwing comments on my videos. Um, you know, I, I see that. I see the guys doing that. You know, I, I, you know, I've got a bunch of guys out there who do add comments to my videos, and I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're a new subscriber, uh, if, if you're here for drama, you're, you're going to be sorely disappointed. So, thanks guys. Um, if you have any questions regarding this, or if you've got any sort of white um, you know, models you've painted yourself, and you want to show them off, drop me a message, um, or you know, get in touch on uh, I'm mostly active on things like Instagram, um, so you know the link will be in the description. Come, come, you know, say hello over there, or hit me up on the Outer Circles Discord server. I'm, you know, that's also a place I'm very, very active. Um, yeah, and just you know, say hi. Alright, guys. My name is Bando. This is Brexit Bando. Have a great day. Bye bye.